Folks, we are 100 days away from the start of the 2021 NFL season. Cowboys versus the Bucks on Thursday night football. So to celebrate and remind everyone just how close we are, I want every single person watching to type 100 right now. The Cowboys Report is presented by Manscaped. You can save 20% and get free shipping on all their fantastic men's grooming products when you head over to manscaped.com and use promo code COWBOYS. Let's get to the rumors then on today's show, beginning with this, because the Cowboys cut either Maurice Kennedy or Anthony Brown. I actually almost gave this one four. The reason why I did not is, well, maybe there's a trade. Maybe there are injuries, but it is definitely more likely than not that at least one of these guys is not on the Cowboys' 53-man roster to open up the season. Let's start with Anthony Brown, the bigger name and the more expensive one as well. He got paid last offseason by the Cowboys, and I still think he's more of a number three or a number four corner at times last year was... Basically, Preston being the number one or number two far too often. You move him, however, via cut or trade, you free up a spot at cornerback and also save a pretty good amount of cap space as well, something we know cap boy Jerry Jones just loves to do. Now, as for Maurice Kennedy, he did not play last season. I know some of you were hyped about him. I was always like, we'll see what happens. His contract is indicative of a player who was not a roster lock to begin with, opted out last year due to COVID-19. I think it's more likely he ends up being cut than Anthony Brown does. I think in the end, they're kind of competing almost for different roles. Now, Brown last year didn't have his best season and part of that is when you can't stop the run it also makes it a lot easier to have success passing the football against you as well because you're just so committed to the run the play action gets you in the end and it's just all it's just a a snowball disaster was the Cowboys defense last year he did make some plays but 2020 was far from the best year that we've seen out of Anthony Brown on the flip side, Maurice Kennedy, who spent time with both the Jets and the Ravens in 2019, got cut by the Ravens, picked up by the Jets, was not bad in a fairly limited 13-game coverage sample size there. Made a couple of decent plays there. But there is a numbers game going on right now at the cornerback position. Trevon Diggs, Kelvin Joseph, Jordan Lewis, and Sean Wright, I think are more or less roster locks because of what they've been invested in. Talent level and just, you know, draft pick and, and just capital invested money-wise. So Brown, Kennedy, C.J. Goodwin, Reggie Robinson, those are three more names. All of a sudden, you go eight deep at the cornerback spot. I think C.J. Goodwin makes it because of special teams, unless maybe Maurice Kennedy beats him out in that role. And I think I'd rather have Kennedy out there than Goodwin when it comes to actual defense. So I think one of these guys in the end, in all likelihood, does not end up making the roster this year for the Cowboys. So who are you cutting? Who would you rather move on from? Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Type MC for Maurice Kennedy or AB for Anthony Brown. This question is the pinned comment on today's video. So get that ad break here on YouTube. Scroll on down and let me know. Let's talk trade rumors now on the Dallas Cowboys report. We're once again going back to linebacker, specifically about trading away Jalen Smith. I'm going to give this one just the one star here. comes to us from Pro Football Focus, who I will give them credit, did not take the coward's way out. They did include a, a, uh, a trade package, which we'll get to here in a second. Now, the rationale behind a Jalen Smith trade right now is the time of the year we're at. It is after June 1st, okay? What that means is the Cowboys would actually save some salary cap space if they were to trade Jalen. They would save $7.2 million on this year's cap, basically his guaranteed base side, which was guaranteed way back when in March. They cannot cut him. They saved no money. It makes no sense. That, that, that thing was locked and loaded when this, uh, this salary guaranteed on the fifth day of the new league year. Now, PFF's trade proposal was this. A 2022 fifth-round pick to the Cowboys. The Chargers get Jalen Smith to pair with Kenneth Murray, and we'll see what the role for Derwin James is, whether it's kind of that pure strong safety in the box a lot. The, the, the role was blended in the modern-day NFL, as we discussed before with Keanu Neal and Jabril Cox. But would you guys do this trade? Get your votes in for me. Type D for deal or type in N for no deal. Would you trade Jalen Smith for a fifth-round pick? 
on one hand, it does save you the $7 million, which is, I think, important for Catboy, and it also helps clarify the linebacker situation where Micah Parsons is getting work at middle linebacker right now, but he'll probably play some strong side linebacker reps as well. Leighton Van Der Esch the, the, is, is on the roster for now. He's been subject to trade rumors or at least trade speculation as well. Keanu Neal, Jabro Cox are better in coverage than Jalen Smith is. Of course, I don't believe the Cowboys would do it. That's why I gave it the one star. And it's less to do with the caliber of player Jalen Smith was last year. Yeah, the tackle numbers are great. The coverage stuff was not. But remember, the Cowboys have allowed Jalen Smith to buy out at a significant cost his 54 jersey and move to number nine. I think if the Cowboys thought that they were going to make a, a move involving Jalen Smith, if they were going to trade him, they would be like, Jerry would be like, oh, no way, no, we're, we're, we're going to keep number nine for... Uh, uh, for Tony Romo, you can't take it quite yet at, at this point here. So Jalen Smith is, I, in the end, I don't think going to get traded here. Like, I don't think that th that is the likely outcome in the end. Like, I think Jalen Smith is going to stick around for one more year with the Dallas Cowboys. I, I, I think that if the Cowboys could find a trade partner, well, maybe they would. I also don't know who wants Jalen Smith at his $7 million base salary for this year. Do I think he'll be better under Dan Quinn? Yes, I do. Is selling low at the lowest point what you want to do? Generally not either. But with the money involved, I kind of wonder if in the end, both sides are kind of like, both potential sides, I should say, are like, eh, no, you keep Jalen for at least the time being. As I mentioned earlier, today's show presented by Manscaped, home of the new lawnmower, 4.0. Oh, you can get 20% off and free shipping as well, by the way, when you use promo code COWBOYS at manscaped.com. They've got the lawnmower 4.0. It's new and improved, of course. They've got different lengths of their heads, allowing you to maybe just decide just how long you want your bush to be growing down there. It's got a better charger and all kinds of great upgrades. Plus, they got more than just the lawnmower 4.0. A ton of other items are available at manscaped.com. Don't forget to use that promo code right there, bottom of your screen. It's promo code COWBOYS. When you use that, it'll save you 20% off and free shipping. Let's go to free agency now. Could the Cowboys go sign Sheldon Richardson? I'm giving this one one star as well. There is a trend on today's rumors roundup on the Cowboys report. Floated out by Bleacher Report, the one move that the Cowboys still need to make this offseason. We have discussed Sheldon Richardson before. There have been previous reports from Mike Fisher and others that the Cowboys are like, ah, yeah, we're good there. In the end, I, you can't say no to anything. Like, maybe Richardson, there's no market. Maybe he signs a one-year vet min deal. I doubt it. But, hey, maybe there are injuries to the Cowboys' defensive line. Right now, as things sit, I'm not going to get my hopes up for that one. Now, I do think Richardson could help. I, I do think that. I think that even though he's not the same guy he was in his prime, five tackles for loss and 4.5 sacks is better than most of the Cowboys' defensive linemen. However, despite what some you know losers at ESPN might say, the Cowboys have drastically impacted their defensive line this offseason with four additions, mostly on the interior. Red Urban will kind of play that a five-tech defensive end, defensive tackle hybrid. They drafted Oso Digizua in the third round. They signed Carlos Watkins, who may or may not make the team. Quinton Bahan, I think, is going to be there to play that, that yeah, monstrous one-technique role. If Oso Digizua, which I think is the plan for the Cowboys, is their three-technique of short-term, long-term, etc., I don't know where Richardson fits in unless they want to like move on from Tristan Hill. So... With where the Cowboys are at on their defensive line, I'm not anticipating, really at almost any position outside of maybe backup quarterback, a significant addition right now. That could be revisited come camp once the team gets everyone truly involved in seeing just what they're working on there. But what do you guys want to do? We're a show for the people here, after all. Should the Cowboys go sign Sheldon Richardson? Type 1 for yes, they should, or type in 0 for no. 
Now, if the Cowboys do make a move, you know we're going to break it down. If you guys want daily Cowboys videos and plenty of other stuff as well, hit that big red button and subscribe. The link is right there, bottom of your screen, youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. Don't miss anything we have for you guys here at the Dallas Cowboys Report. I did not plan to doing this one, but hey, enough of you guys DM me or added me on Twitter. I had to include it. Uh, this fake Twitter account, NFL Rooms, says Malik Cooker will choose between the Cowboys and Dolphins and choice should come soon. This account, folks, is not real. That is a fake news account. They are not credible. This is not real. We've discussed Malik Cooker plenty on the show. I'll let you guys in on a secret as to what that account is doing. They're guessing and making things up because Malik Cooker took two visits, the Cowboys and the Dolphins. It's actually not a bad guess on their part. Maybe he'll pick one. Except here's what I think is actually going down from various reports, including Brian Broaddus. I think Fisher mentioned it as well. I've mentioned before on the show as well. The reason why the Cowboys didn't sign Malik Hooker months ago when they signed DeMonte Casey and Jerron Curse instead, I don't think Malik Hooker's medical checked out. I think... Do you guys remember Eric Berry when the Cowboys brought him in and then he never signed? Like, I think in reality, the medical stuff wasn't great for Malik Hooker. And that's a big reason why he's still unsigned. Now, the medical could get better. We could revisit this later on in the offseason and say, hey, you know what? He's further along in his recovery. Everything's good to go now. The Cowboys took and signed Monte Casey instead because clearly his medical is in great shape. He's already out there at, at OTA. It's a very, very good sign there. This is the same account, folks, that told you Denzel Perryman was a key target for Dallas. Never was. Just absolutely made up. How they get so much traction from spewing BS, I don't really know. Could the Cowboys sign Malik Hooker maybe one day if the medical gets cleared? Sure. I don't really think that's a, a, a consideration right now for the Cowboys. And that account... Stop trusting it. It's not real. It's just all made up. 